What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to take you for a guide, guided tour, guided hot lap around Monaco. Um, quite similar to the series that Nico Rosberg does where he shows you around a circuit. Um, I wanted to do this for the longest time and I'm only going to do it for Monaco uh, because a lot of people ask me all the time how do you be fast around here and I feel like in general this is my most successful circuit on the F1 calendar and I feel like there are a lot of techniques that you need to learn or be wary of in order to be fast around here so I'm gonna part my information onto you guys and hopefully that can help you with your online races career mode league racing whatever it might be uh, hopefully this video will help you guys so uh, we're gonna get right into it we're gonna delve into everything basically so Please like and subscribe if you enjoy these types of videos. And if you do, maybe I'll do more for F1 2021. Who knows? Okay, so uh, here we go. We are in the garage now for time trial. Uh, basically, the setup that I've got loaded is basically the one from the top F1 Esports guys. Uh, Yana Watmir, David Tanitza, etc. It's the one that those guys are running. And uh, here it is right here. This is the baseline that you should probably run. It's probably going to be a bit aggressive, but if you can get used to it, then you'll be fast, obviously. 1011 wings. Uh, transmission is pretty much the same, as is the suspension to most circuits. Um, and then here, it's not overly stiff on the rear anti-roll bar or the suspension, but I think that's just to make the car a little bit more drivable at Monaco. Plus, we've already got high uh, you know, downforce anyway, so that should be okay. Low ride height, brake bias, and pressure is exactly the same in every circuit, as is the tire pressure. So that setup should really be no surprise to you guys. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do a slow lap of Monaco, where I'm going to show you all the racing lines and the braking points, turning points, etc. We head down into turn one. DRS is obviously open. Then we just brake just before, right about here, just before the uh, zebra crossing right here. And then you want to get as close as you can to this wall on the left hand side. That is absolutely spot on. You can see pretty much no margin left there because it's, uh, it opens up the corner as you turn right for St. Devot. We're going to use a little flashback here. So this is the way you go in just like this and then you try and mount as much of this inside part as you can because that opens up the radius and then you want to get up close to the wall on the left hand side as quickly as you can. Again, we're going to utilize flashbacks just to um, bring it home. I use fourth gear through here, and that uh, minimizes the wheel spin and look up, looks after the rear tires. In a qualifying scenario, you will want to be probably in third gear if you just want to get the nose in, get the rotation going. But fourth gear most of the time through here is uh, absolutely optimal. Again, using up all the space on the left-hand side. Monaco, the secret to this place is making sure you absolutely make this place as wide as possible. Now here, you want to get over to the right-hand side, break just after that ripple strip. Not that ripple strip. Again, the um, the zebra crossing. Uh, I don't know if that's what you call it in the UK or America. But right here, just as you go flat. Um, wait, no, actually, I've got the wrong one. <laughs> so you go up here. It's, it's obviously hard to pick it out at full speed. It's after this one. And then you break. I shift down to fourth gear. And uh, the key to this one here is to take a really late apex into here. You don't want to turn in too early. Because if you do, if you're too far over to the left-hand side, you're uh, you're cramping yourself. So nice and late. Fourth gear through here. You don't want to hit that apex. You want to hit this one here, the second one. Right here. Because you want to get into the groove, tuck in, and then fling it back over to the right. And I'll shift up to fifth gear by the time... I start to turning right for this uh, second part. So again, I'll do it a little bit faster this time. Fourth, 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 and then here, fifth. And then, yeah, try and make it as wide as possible. There is a bump here, so you can move over to the right and uh, avoid that. We now head into Rosberg Corner, where you don't want to end up down here. Otherwise, Lando Norris will shout at you. Imagine if they had an Oh, they go Rosberg! <laughs> oh, he's done a Rosberg! <laughs> But again, over to the right. I mean, on the F1 game, to be honest, you can even just go straight over this if you want to. But out of habit, I just tend to move left, uh, move right, 
and then back to the left. And then here, I'll be breaking right about here. Right as the wall kind of changes color on the left-hand side, you can see here, that's what you aim for. And uh, great overtaking spot in the race if you're close enough. You shift down into second gear. Can do third if you want, but second helps get the nose in. And then here, on the power nice and early, there's a bit of a piece of the wall that sticks out on F1 2020, uh, which wasn't in the previous game, so maybe Codemasters updated that a little bit. But um, yeah, try and get over to the right as quickly as you can. Uh, but then just save a little bit because now it's easier to hit this wall on the right-hand side. So don't do that. First gear for the Lowe's hairpin. And uh, ideally, you want to hit that curb on the left-hand side. Because that actually helps with rotation. If you, you know, leave it too late, then you leave yourself with a lot to do and a lot of understeer. And then you'll end up in this barrier, just like I've done. Breaking just as the wall starts to come back out at you. There's no real reference there. It's, it's kind of just muscle memory. Then we hit the curb. Short shifting up to third gear. Absolutely critical in your run out of um, these slow technical corners. Back over to the left-hand side before you fling it right. And you want to mount this inside part of the curb. Again, a lot of grip here. And it it's just helps with your rotation. Gives you a bit more room on exit. And then here, as we approach Portier, you want to be right up against this left-hand wall. No danger of you uh, breaking a wing or anything. Turn in. You can shift down to second gear to help get the rotation if you like. But then straight back up into third to get up on the power and uh, accelerating down the Monaco Tunnel. And for a brief moment, you can actually relax uh, for about five seconds. Doesn't matter what line you take into here. But again, you uh, want to get yourself over to the outside part of the circuit. And just as the, the, the hill kind of dips, just after under a meter board, that's when you brake. You can take it in second gear down here. Uh, you want to leave it as late as you can and then up to third and then try and cut this corner as much as possible. This is probably the top three corners you want to get right. You absolutely want to maximize your, your like line and rotation through here because that sets you up out of here and into the third sector. So again, I'll show you from uh, what it looks like from you know, third person view. Basically, that's about what you can get. You can actually get away with all four tires over this curbing here, just. But not much more than that. Thanks, Codemasters, for strict corner cutting rules. That's That might actually be a cut, but you have to, like, practice and uh, get used to how much you can get away with, basically. But that's pushing it on a good lap if you're trying to overtake someone or on a qualifying lap, for example. Uh, but yeah, if you can get the car and the nose over to the right as quickly as you can, that opens up this corner, means you can get on the power uh, a lot earlier, and it sets you up for to back my favorite corner in F1. So we've maximized that. We're heading back over to the right-hand side for to back. And again, you basically want to be pretty much pushing up against this wall, brushing up against it, late turn in. Again, you have to kind of get the feel right for when you want to turn in, but... Um, try and leave a little bit of margin with that inside part of the barrier, especially in a race scenario. You always want to leave a little bit of uh, margin on the table just in case you turn in that little bit too early or you've uh, just not got the reference quite right. That is probably about perfect in a race scenario. In qualifying, you want to be a little bit closer to the left if you want to maximize the exit speed um, coming out of there. But as you exit the corner making sure that you carry absolutely all of the momentum up to here. Towards the end of the race, I get braver and braver. And in qualifying, yes, I push the margins all the way out to there. Sometimes you can hit that wall lightly uh, on full damage. And again, into here, not really an important corner, but this one coming up, the final chicane. This sets up basically all of my moves when I'm in trouble here in Monaco. This is about the breaking point for the final chicane. And again, you want to leave no margin to the left-hand side because you want to flick it in here in fifth gear. Try and get the nose in for this first part because then that gives you more room and more margin to really fling it out of this left-hander. And this is what sets up your moves into Raskas. So here we go. We try and, again, you can cut this corner the most 
out of any corner around Monaco, you can basically fly the whole car over this yellow sausage curb. That's the secret, basically, to getting the moves done. And again, getting on the power as early as you can and basically brushing up against this wall as well. Stick to the right-hand side for a Raskas overtake. We're not doing that on this occasion. This is where you want to break. Downshift to second gear in the race if you want to look after the tires. First gear in qualifying if you're maximizing the overall lap time. And then about here, short shift up to third. Don't hit the inside and bottle a race. That would be ideal. And then again, carrying the speed over to the left-hand side. A light dab of the brakes for the final corner. Uh, the further to the left you are, the more, open, the more it opens up the last corner. Up to fourth gear by about now. Try and get onto that curb on the left-hand side. That's how you know you've maximized it. Open the DRS. Up to the line. And that's a hot lap of Monaco. Hopefully... You've uh, taken all those tips on board, and and that's that's the way to do a, a lap for Monaco. That's how I that's how I drive it. Um, you know, of course, I don't think about doing all those things. It just kind of comes naturally. Uh, but that's that's how I do it. Maximizing the width of the circuit, absolute key to this place. And if you can do that accurately, then uh, you're always going to be quick here. It's a good lap, but it's not great, all right? There were a lot of corners where I chickened out of going faster than what I could have, just so I could get the lap in and get the video ready for today. I went away five, that's okay, but I'm not gonna put in the five hours to get that extra second. You guys get the point. That's how you drive Monaco. Do what I do, but just do it better. Thanks for watching, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time for another video. I was planning to do how to overtake a Monaco and stick it at the end of this video, but the video would just be way too long. So if you want to see that, I'll, uh, I'll make that a separate video. But until then, I'll see you next time. Thank goodness that's over. Time trialing in Monaco was a nightmare. Literally.